Beautiful. You are watching the Hoffman family in France. Davy, I want some of everybody's. I'm David Hoffman, independent documentary filmmaker, bird by my side. And I'm about to tell you about a moment in the growth of my family that may relate to the growth of yours. But one of those special moments where your kids are at a certain age, they can travel, where we were free to travel, had the money and the time going to France, France, France where the food and the culture and everything is just so wonderful. Adventuring. Okay, hold the flower above your head like a, like, there we are, so that's your liberty. You are not supposed to do this in the Georges Pompidou Museum. We feel like the four schmooze. You remember the schmooze? They were these kind of fat sort of things that just waddle around together. That's what we did as travelers. And I'm recording on my GoPro. Davey, come on in and take a look. So that is not a, let me just have much of it. GoPro, teeny little camera no microphone, just rolling everything because people let me into every place. Nobody stops me carrying the GoPro at that time. And I tell my family, this GoPro is a future box. We're not recording for the present. We're recording for the future. So now, all these years later, my sons watch this, learning about themselves as youth. And my wife and I get a chance sort of to reflect on what a moment. Now, what is it about Paris, about France, that's so great? It is a few things, just a few clips from what we're experiencing. The food. <laughs> Croissants. <laughs> Sweets. Can we have uh, two chocolate donuts? No, sweet. Mm. Is it good, Davy? Mm -hmm. Hey, there's chocolate inside the donut. Oh, the wine. The daddy is going to drink the wine for le Very young. The way people dress. The latest fashions. Street vendors. Street musicians. And when women pass by, the wonderful smell of French perfume. Great locations everywhere. Such amazing things to see. History, sculpture, art. Every little store seems to have something amazing. Oh, old things mixed with new things. I love Crowds everywhere, but people being very friendly. And wherever you go, something special. Guys, look at the poster of pretty much every cartoon. And here we are crossing this bridge, which has thousands of locks that are locked. Lovers did that together and then locked the locks on the bridge. Wow. That's the locks and locks and locks and locks and locks. And of course, we're visiting famous sites like the Eiffel Tower. No! Maybe. 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 But my wife really wants to go to the Louvre. And she wants to go to the Louvre to see the most famous painting in the world. 10 million visitors a year visit the Louvre. 8 million visitors go to see this painting, the Mona Lisa. I mean, there are paintings, and then there's this painting. This painting is insured for 700 million bucks. Back in the 1900s, somebody broke the glass and cut the painting. So they tried to steal the painting. In fact, somebody did steal the painting, and they got it back. I'm not a lover of museums or of art, but she wants to go, we're going. And the reason I'm posting this now is because I heard an audio by this famous traveler storyteller, Rick Steves. He has an audio program that tells people how to travel. And what I heard was the Mona Lisa. And the Mona Lisa experience that my family had was, by his standards, totally wrong. 
She's the most famous woman in the world, instantly recognizable. She is Mona Lisa. Here to talk with me is my friend and co-author, Jean Openshaw. Bonjour. Hey, Jean. Mona Lisa has such a mysterious appeal. Well, yeah, her image is burned into everybody's mind. All anyone has to do is close their eyes and they can see the thing. Mona always draws a paparazzi crowd, so picture it. You're at the Louvre. You're in this this huge room, mobbed with hundreds of tourists. Suddenly there it is, a tiny painting behind bulletproof glass. So here's how the day started. We're outside the Louvre on a long line, and I'm checking with everybody about, did they do a good poop that morning? Because when you're traveling, as you know, walking around a city, hard to find a bathroom that's good. Everyone has, is well fed, well slept, and well poopy. We have what, which is critical when you're in another country. Have you poopy today? We oui, we oui, must, yeah. Have you poopy? No, I haven't pooped all week. Well, Wait. yes, I pooped yes, this today. morning, but otherwise that's... I haven't pooped. I heard, I saw you David, did you poopy? This morning? No. Yesterday? No, no, no poopy from David. So we go in the Louvre, a hot day, no water around. Oh, the Venus de Milo. Venus de Milo and incredible sculptures. But we're headed to the Mona Lisa. Oh, I'm going to the Mona Lisa. Oh, his mommy's going to the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa. This must be it. The Mona Lisa. Oh, there she is. There she is. There she flows. Uh, tourist, tourist. This is going to be exciting. Except when we get there, there's a huge crowd. You can barely see this little postage stamp thing. And we have no idea, my sons and I, why we're here. We're going to stand on this line. People don't seem to be moving fast enough. So annoying us, we annoy Heidi. And we say, look, we got to go. OK, we've seen it. Big deal. Get us out of here. Don't come to the Louvre if you got any brains in your head and you have kids. It's just a small painting. It's like a stamp. I believe all the faces with the with the fruit and the plants. I love this shit. How can you not love this? She tries to get us interested by pointing out other great art that's around, Renaissance art, great paintings. Uh, mommy is torturing her children and husband right now. Let's go, boys. Come on, Davy. We'll get out of here. If I can talk mommy into it. Jesus has died. All the Jesus nuns have said. Mm-hmm. He probably died here in the Louvre. Do you, Henry, do you need a toilet? Get us out of here. You're a it 30. cost us $30 to get in here for nothing. I come up with a song, Get Me Out of the Louvre. Get me out of the Louvre. Get me out of the Louvre. Now, I'm about to play the rest of Rick Steves, where he and his buddy tell you how to do this right. What to see when you get there. I was mesmerized by this because had I done this, I believe I would have been thrilled as so many are. I would have understood why this painting is so haunting and so famous and gets people the way that it does. My loss, hopefully by watching this video and by listening to Rick Steves, your gain. So picture it, you're at the Louvre. You're in this, this huge room, mobbed with hundreds of tourists. Suddenly there it is, a tiny painting behind bulletproof glass. You want to get closer, but the crowds are too thick. So the key to unlocking the mystery of Mona Lisa is... I know. Slow, slow down. down. Yes. Take your time. Make your way slowly to the front. And soon... Ah, your eyes lock onto Mona's and suddenly... You're in her world. It's like you're in a hazy summer day. There's a beautiful long-haired woman. She's sitting on a balcony. She rests her arm lightly on the armrest. She turns her body toward you, looks directly at you with those eyes, very intense. Mm. She smiles. Or does she? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just you, her, and a sweeping landscape in the distance. So finally, your patience has been rewarded, and you've entered the mysterious realm of Mona Lisa. The first glance of Mona Lisa is often pretty straightforward. It's just like a portrait. There's actually a lot going on there. You can look deeper. You can appreciate the layers of mystery. First is that it actually is a portrait. It's a real person, and it looks like a real person. So, like, if you think of that landscape behind Mona Lisa, it seems endless and hazy. And even Mona's smile 
is enigmatic because the corners of her mouth are hazy themselves. You can't really see, is she smiling? Is she frowning? You don't really know her mood. Whatever Leonardo did have in mind, we'll never know. This simple painting has, has really held the world in its spell. <laughs>